Hi everyone, so this video is actually inspired by an article that I read on the website Becoming Minimalist and I will link it in the description box below but it's a beautiful article written about the life cycle of becoming a minimalist. Now personally I would never call myself a minimalist. I just find it a really strict defining term and which is why I always say I incorporate a minimalistic philosophy into my life. Now, I wanted to make this video sharing with you, from my perspective, the life cycle of a minimalist. And when I look back at my own journey, my love of minimalism was born out of an emotional and mental panic. I was drowning in stuff when Rocco was born, um, I couldn't breathe, and it helped get me out of that bad place. And it has taken time and there have been setbacks and struggles but there have also been insights and revelations through this journey into minimalism and hopefully along the way through sharing my videos on YouTube I've inspired other people um, in all different places in the world and walks of life to incorporate some sort of minimalism in their life for their benefit. So if this video is the life cycle of a minimalist from my perspective. Often the first entry into minimalism is born out of stress and unease. Intuition that knowing that there is something better out there, a better way of living your life, but not quite knowing what it is. Um, wanting more purpose in life um, and something different. That something that's going to give you more substance and meaning and be a lot more concrete. Almost like a sense that you need to go find a new religion or a deeper form of your own religion or, or even spirituality. Then from that, somehow, somewhere, minimalism comes through to you and your ears prick up and you want to hear about it. Um, you're still quite guarded, you're sitting on the fence, maybe even a little bit judgmental, but you want to keep learning more and more. It, it is definitely of interest. And you're, but you're still very cautious. And then it becomes curiosity. You actually want to know more. You're interested to see exactly what the benefits. You want more concrete evidence. You might watch some videos on YouTube. You might start reading a few blogs. You are doing a lot of research and you've got lots of questions though about minimalism, like how to do it, when to do it, where to do it, who's done it. And the curiosity is now becoming unmanageable to the point where you're like, right, action time, I'm going to have a go at doing this. And you start decluttering. You might take one part of your life or one part of your home. You might just start aside, like I did, I started with my wardrobe and then moved around the house. And you start to really enjoy the, the experience from this. It's almost exhilarating. You see all the stuff that you are finally saying goodbye and there's something really re-energizing about actually finally putting actions behind your words and your thoughts that have been building up for so long. And you proudly embrace the new space and the feelings that come from just doing this one little mini declutter or minimizing experience. And then it becomes addictive. You want to go more. Where's the next place that you can declutter and minimize? And you progress through the parts of the home, through parts of your life. And now you're into the thick. You're a newbie. You're in the thick and addicted to minimalism. It's exhilarating. It's cathartic. You just want to go deeper and harder and you are just loving all the feelings of, and proud and you want to tell everyone about your love of minimalism and it's changing your life and you can't believe you didn't know about this or do this such a long time ago and you just want everyone to know about the benefits and have a go at doing it themselves. And it is an incredible place and you feel the next phase which is this like where you get to where you think you've done as much minimizing as you possibly can for the time being, you feel a sense of inner peace and tranquility and you're loving life again. You realize you've got so much time back and your home feels so tranquil and almost nurturing again and you've got energy 
and you've got a sense of clarity and purpose and vision and but also you've got this great calmness like almost like a, a wise sensible monk and then you know you surf with that for a, for a while and that is to be honest the always the underlying feeling that comes from minimalism but then you hit a bit of a bumpy part and in come a few challenges you might come across something tempting to buy that you know you definitely do not need you may even feel like this like you know impulse to just get back to like a bad habit and you start to sort of feel questioned this like push pull feeling within you because there's this inner conflict where you really want to live this amazing life of simplicity and minimalism but then you see this big glossy fantastic thing that you want to own and have as yours and buy and enjoy and it's really tempting and it's draining on your on your resources and you even smart may start to find that minimalism actually has some negatives it can be really challenging people often like who aren't into minimalism can see it be quite judgmental or you might find that because you have less stuff you're starting to wear through those things a lot quicker or you haven't quite mastered the you know managing of the sort of life admin that comes from minimalism such as you're always making sure you're on top of your washing because you don't have as many clothes or always making sure you get your shoes resold because you wear the same pair of shoes more often than you usually would so you're starting to become now a bit aware of those the limitations or challenges that come with minimalism but you still love it and you still really enjoy it but you're starting to realize it's not as amazing as you thought even though you love it and even though it is actually amazing and from that you may experience a bit of a setback or maybe even a big setback you realize that old habits die hard and you either accidentally or consciously go and have a splurge and this is often after a really strict and mean and tough um, minimalistic decluttering period where you almost like rebel against yourself and go out and buy things just to prove yourself that you are in control and you can do this and and for all sorts of various conversations in your head and I you say no I'm probably sounding really crazy right now but then you get back to your old self and you recover and you realize okay I had a bit of a setback a bit of a splurge it's okay it's not the end of the world I'm aware of it and I'm gonna grow from that and I'm gonna become wiser and stronger and it's actually okay to buy things I just need to make sure that I buy things that I l truly love, value, use and appreciate if you want to use my mantra. And you don't need to beat yourself up. And minimalism is about love and about surrounding yourself with those things that you love and have meaning to you and contribute to your own level of vibration and energy and happiness. And it's you start to then fall into the next stage where you get back onto the phase of decluttering and you go through it again sometimes almost as a sense of punishment for spending but you then decide to take minimalism because you love it on another level and you don't just minimize your home and your wardrobe but you go deeper and you start to minimize for example your food you might minimize even some of your friends where you realize certain people might be quite toxic in your life you might minimize your office space your, what's inside your car, um, the way that you choose to spend your weekends or even your holidays. But you realize that minimiz minimiz minimization or minimalism isn't just within small confines of your life. It, it can expand and infiltrate into so many facets in your world and in your heart and in your mind and in your life. And so you continue from here on in doing the push-pull of decluttering, a bit of spending, buying letting things back into your home and then decluttering and it's this push pull but you then have th that feeling we come back again where you come to a place of acceptance and love and you understand and realize that you're a human and there are parts where you minimalism is a journey and that you can create your own rules and guidelines around minimalism it is safe and perfectly acceptable to not always apply minimalism in every part of your life. You don't have to if you don't want to. And you realize that minimalism is a lot of self-control and self-discipline, but most importantly, self-love and self-respect. 
and you peacefully and proudly wear a badge of minimalism on your heart not necessarily for anyone to see or to show people but for your own sense of mental clarity sensitivity awareness and simple happiness so in my mind that is the journey or life cycle of a minimalist and hopefully I myself am at this stage where I am in a place of acceptance and love where I embrace minimalism I don't have any judgment against myself or people around me who want to use minimalism or include minimalism or absolutely shun minimalism it doesn't matter it's my life and my journey and I myself love all the benefits and even the challenges that come from it and the self-awareness of course Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I didn't sound too crazy, like I have lots of voices going on in my head. Um, if you haven't seen any of my other um, minimalism videos and you're new to minimalism or you've never heard of my channel before, please make sure you check out my minimalistic playlist and of course all my others because I don't just talk about minimalism, I talk about investing, I talk about passive income, I talk about even minimalism and money. I talk about how to get out of credit card debt, how to build up savings. I talk about capsule wardrobe fashion. I talk about life efficiency. I talk about life struggles. I talk about so many different things on my channel and I'm always open to hearing video requests and I'm really good at actually making those videos for you when I can. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will see you, hopefully, if you subscribe to the channel, next week for Money Monday or later in the week Thursday for more lifestyle love. Ciao for now. <laughs>